Okay. Can you see the grapes? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi, baby. Okay, there's the grapes. There's Jane. Okay, finally. Sorry about that, guys. We just, I thought I was into this stuff. All right, so here's my, um, this is all muddy now. Jane's going to yell at me, get me all muddy. See, she's getting to it. All right, anyway, this is my timer for my irrigation. It goes on um, every other day for an hour, two different zones, each for an hour, and then uh, goes into the uh, drip lines. The drip lines provide a half inch of water every hour. So I have going every other day, which gives me approximately an uh, inch and a half of water a week, not counting what God gives me, like today. So this is, this is the cantaloupes. And green froze. Didn't come up yet. And then this is uh, lettuce. It's just starting to come. When you're muted again, you've accidentally maybe hit the mute button. Hey, Glenn. There we go. All this space is for watermelon. And then uh, yellow onions. I mean, we dropped one, I look where it came up. <laughs> and this is uh, golden beets, it's just starting to come up, I think. And peanuts, I figured I'd have fun with that, growing some peanuts this year. And red, red onions. And then this is corn. And the corn packets I used, doesn't look like any of them came up. I planted from, from here to the flag, and that was going to be the first crop, and then a couple of weeks later, I was going to add some more, but uh, looks like the first crop's not coming up. This is the asparagus. We have about 50 plants of asparagus, and oh, there's one guy. You see him down there? Yep. This is uh, our garlic. And we have some more tomatoes. This this is the mulch that I laid out. It seems to be keeping the weeds down quite a bit, but I'll still have to go in there and pull them out. These are tomatoes. This is, I just finished mowing this afternoon. I'm not going to lay this out before it rains. Now it's going to be a, a mess. These are peppers, all different kinds of peppers. I think I have three different kinds of peppers. Uh, three different kinds of um, sorry, that's a, that's basil. Three different kinds of basil, and then uh, these are bush beans, a row of bush beans, and then these are the peppers. And I have maybe ten different kinds of peppers, all kinds. And then after that, we have the zucchini. The, the ones that are coming up are the trials. The gold mine and the golden glory. They're the ones that are coming up in the far end. And over here are the ones that we saved, but uh, they don't look like they're coming up. And this is Jane's herb garden that's getting taken over by chamomile. And Jane, you want to take over? Okay. Can you go ahead? How do I see it? Here's your little picture. I did. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, I had a couple of terminal plants in here a few years back. And what happened was one of the years, and then he began to use the vegetable garden. So he may be taken out the same into a um, container. I put it in the container, 
and they just never grew in the container. Well, it's been about maybe four or five years since that chamomile was here. And this year, we were bestowed with chamomile coming out of our ears. You can see that there's just so much chamomile here. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, and, and there's garlic that I'm evidently missing on here. Yes, they got it. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure is. And um, there's also a rosemary bush there. There's some oregano, lemon balm, but the chamomile is just as crazy. I harvested a lot of it for tea. And it also came up in the container this year, which was really, really bizarre. Um, I just never expected that to happen. Now, over by the fence back here, um, I have a raspberry bush, and there's nothing blooming yet, so it's really not that that interesting. And you can see that our neighbors have a chain link fence there. And in front of that chain link fence, what I did last year was I, two years ago, I made a garden. Um, our property is 100 feet wide, so I cut, there's 100 feet worth of garden in the back there by about maybe two and a half feet wide. Um, I'm going to take a lot of the plants out of there and put them in a few other places, but I do grow a lot of sunflowers back here, and we've got some apple trees coming up back here. We yeah, we, those are ones that we grafted. I don't know if the grass is or not, but, and this is my raspberry bush, which has a lot of stuff on it. Right? And I have some flocks that's back here that bloomed already. A lot of bee bones back there, but that hasn't bloomed, and some, it looks like some sedum and some um, potato leaves and stuff. And all of this is going to kind of start moving freeway in about another three weeks or so. So that's the back here. Now we'll go to the real garden. And I have um, a strip next to the driveway that is approximately 100 feet. And it's absolutely beautiful when it starts blooming. Oh, yeah, these are the... The great front seat both from the other side, so the sun isn't in there. We, I don't know what we have actually, but they're really good. I have no idea, but this is these are the grapes, and we have big, big grapes. They're actually getting big. Sweet, I love that. It's just so cool. And um, we do we have some root planted underneath. And some marigolds planted underneath to keep the insect population down because our brakes are um, infected with Japanese beetles last year, and the Japanese beetles loved them. We have some spots here. Who would like to identify that? We should ask us. We should ask us, yes. Ask the National Garden. So that's what's going on here. This is a, a little herb garden that I have back here. It's a raised bed. I have my stevia plants over here, some parsley, and I planted parsley. I also have my basil trials here that were coming up, and now they're not coming up. This is lovage, this huge thing. I've had it for several years, but it's never bloomed. And I'm letting it bloom this year because it's really interesting. It's very pretty. This is a cilantro plant that started growing up here in uh, January. And then I have some oregano that's growing in here that I'm going to have to transplant. But the love is just really crazy. So this is a little bitty. And there's some sorrel in there. It looks like I planted a garlic in there last year. Uh, so I don't know what's going to come up in here and what isn't. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot coming up, to be honest with you. There was, but maybe something ate it. Who knows? And here is our fig tree that looks dormant, but it's coming to life. And here is a silly container that contains a chamomile that I transplanted that I thought died. We can see it <laughs> arriving. Crazy. So, now, this is the strip along the driveway. I have marigolds here, and um, this grass was supposed to be removed, but it wasn't. Uh, some milkweed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go down here. It's going to be a little easier for me to do it from this angle, I think, to get my shadow in there a little bit. But there's some milkweed. The day is a lot of to bloom. And I have some bee balm that's kind of come up for about a few places there. 
now lavender. I have fresh lavender and English lavender. And that's blooming beautifully right now. And we have Mexican sunflower. Lots of different kinds of daylilies. I'm not sure which ones they are, but they're, they're, they've are got blooms on them. Some more milkweed back there. This is a rosemary plant that is taking over the world. Some more day lilies that are going to start blooming soon. A little lavender back there, the irises which are done. Uh, more day lilies, lavender. And this is a patch of thyme that I have here, which is really wonderful. I usually harvest that and dry it. And then here I have some yarrow, home flowers. Oh, it's probably a weed. It's pretty tough. And then here we get to <laughs> a little bit more milkweed in there. And this is the butterfly weed, the swamp butterfly weed. The smell is outrageously beautiful. There's a huge amount of it here. Um, we had somebody helping us with the garden last year, and he inadvertently took all this out because he says, don't weep. And yes, it is a weep, but it's necessary for the monarchs and for the butterflies because they get lay their eggs up for eggs on the bottom. And the caterpillars actually eat the leaves. And so there's a tremendous amount of caterpillar poop on the driveway when these are, yeah, that's a good thing. So there's a lot of this here now. And, and I actually rescued it from where it was dumped in the back and planted it last year and obviously it's a weed and it just takes over and there's more here you can see these beautiful flowers are just they're starting to come up and they're starting to be beautiful and the smell was outrageous more day lilies and day lilies are edible and they're quite good by the way um looks like i have some galardia down here and this looks like a sea bum that's kind of blooming i'm not sure yep definitely sea bum uh, there's some things here that I have no idea what they are, but they're here. Um, my Mexican sunflowers are absolutely beautiful, and they come up and they stay around uh, through later in the season. And here I have some of uh, my sweet William or Dianthus. Yep, here's a bee. But uh, it's just about finished. And some blue salvia, I think it is. And the bay lilies. And I don't know what these are. We got these from the plant, so, but they're really pretty. And they actually bloomed beautifully. Then I have some um, African purple uh, basil. And then I have this gorgeous sage that I got at Heather's a couple of years back. And that beautiful dianthus again. And another patch of thyme. And bringing us to, we are a monarch butterfly way station. In order to become a monarch butterfly way station, you have to have certain flowers in your garden that... Um, of course, will attract and feed the monarch butterfly. So um, we have all of those required uh, plants that are in there. Then I have another little garden on this side of the driveway, which has some daffodils. When they come up, they're really beautiful. Um, I have some vineyards, pinkers first thing I have a volunteer cool flower here and here. So some blue salvia here that volunteer. Another volunteer cool flower which is actually blooming. And there are some other things that are coming up. There's a sunflower that popped up, and I did not plant that this year. There are some other things that are coming up. Now, this garden, um, actually, the, the garden over here on the side where the monarch sign is, that's 100 feet by about maybe three feet wide, maybe three and a half feet wide. Now, this is all bead bomb, and I have several colors of it. I have pink, magenta, lavender, and white, I believe. My shelter daisies, as you can see, are just about ready to cut. They should be out in a day or so. And then there are some invasive blackberry bushes that have just volunteered themselves to be in here. I also have this um, mutant pasta plant that is taking over the world. And I've never seen anything so aggressive in my life. It's crazy. They're more aggressive than these silly blackberries are. But um, it's, it's cute. And it's just growing and growing. I have a little hydrangea over here. I have some arhaskas back here. And then I have an oak leaf hydrangea, which I just love in the floor when it turns uh, 
some different colors. It's, it's so pretty. Then we have over here a little flocks that came up by itself this year and some zinnia that are just about ready to set. And a few little marigolds in there. This is the Wygelia that I trim down every year. And it just is the most beautiful flowering uh, plant I've ever seen in my life. I, I love it so very much. Um, I have a picture of it somewhere on Facebook, and I'll see if I can point that out. But I have uh, also a, a red azalea over here, where it still be is blooming now. Another hosta under there. Again, invasive blackberry. Boo, don't like them. But there they are. They, they will be taken out. Then I have this beautiful blue leaf. Um, hosta over here. The peonies are just about done. A lot of irises in the front here, but they're just about finished. And um, there's, there's other stuff here that I, I'm not even sure what it is, but look, there's a little combine back there that I rescued from Lowe's when I worked there many years ago. This year it bloomed profusely and it's absolutely gorgeous. I just love the color of it. It's so, so pretty. And then we go over here, a few more irises. And this is a total shade space. And you can see the astilbe is thriving in here. And the chocolate coral, coral bells do well in here. The, um, that's Harry. He's my turtle. And underneath Harry is a hosta. It's been there for years, but it's not growing. I also have a bleeding heart that I thought bled to death, but it's coming back. And then there looks like Rebecca over here. And that's kind of nice because that's really pretty nice. But the um, astilbe is wonderful. I've always done well with astilbe in my shade gardens. And this particular garden is pretty much all shade, shade for maybe an hour or two if I'm in the morning. Now, over here, this is my wildflower garden. I put it in last year and just kind of put the seeds in there, and it's kind of like a freeform shape. And all of this came up from what was here last year. So, yeah, yeah these are, well, obviously, you know, these are um, uh, coreopsis. And there's some galardia in there, and uh, there's other stuff that has buds on it, and I don't even know what it is yet, but we'll see that, you know, it's going to be there soon. Um, these are the same wildflower seeds that are for sale on the Master Gardener website, okay? And it's the same, the, the same, it's the ones that, I mean, I think that, is this class? Yeah. No, I don't think so. this. What is this? Yeah. I thought it was here. But Glenn did a talk on wildflowers, and he gave these uh, little packets of wildflower seeds out to everybody. And this, this is what is in those seeds. Now we have over here, we have a peach tree. Yay! And the peach tree. Yeah, this is the first year we've ever had peach trees. Yeah. yeah, we don't really. Yeah, there's too many peaches. If I need to cut them back or just let them go, well, let them go. We're so too. excited. To see yeah, we're just happy to have peaches. And we also planted several red buds in the front here. We planted five red buds along the, you know, little back from the property line here, yeah, which is really nice. Hundred K planting. And I have some uh, barrels up on the deck. Uh, they just don't do that well for me up there. I had Gerber daisies in them last year, and they just fizzled out and did nothing. So I'm trying marigold this year because it's pretty hard to do anything bad with a marigold, yet these are not flourishing that well. So I may stick some seeds in there. Who knows? So basically, um, this is, these are the gardens. It, it's kind of difficult because nothing is really, it's not blooming as profusely as it will be blooming in another couple of weeks because you can see these day lilies. We're just starting to get buds on the Stelladoros are the earliest ones. And so that's what you're seeing now first for the Stelladoros. And um, they're, the, they're the first ones out. And then, you know, everybody else comes out after that. And it's just really pretty. It's just a, a beautiful strip of, of, and we've got a bee. Hmm. we got bees down here yet. We definitely have bees. Actually, I saw a honeybee this afternoon when I saw her. So. I was really happy about that. And everything is just really pretty over here. And this is my beautiful butterfly weed that is just overtaking the world. Mm. Milkweed in there. Yeah, now all we need are the butterflies. So that's it. Any questions about 
this garden.